Spencer, you're really focused on gender diversity in the workplace, and you've been doing a lot to recruit women onto corporate boards, um, hiring women for top executive positions. What was the spark that triggered your interest in this and your commitment? Um, well, part of it is personal. My wife is a doctor. I've got two girls. They're both interested in business and technology. <laughs> Those are good reasons. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, the, it, it starts, I think, selfishly there to some extent, that personal connection. But I also strongly believe that it drives better business results, that having diversity in the room it, when you're debating decisions, different points of view, gender, ethnicity, race, income, education, that creates better outcomes. And once you get religion on that, it's quite easy to get behind diversity and equity and inclusion, not just for the social good, but for the business goals. You've actually been very transparent about the, your track record at Zillow. More than 40% of your 3,500 employees are women. Uh, you've achieved equal pay, yeah. all good stuff, but you say that the Zillow board has only one woman, April Underwood from uh, Slack. Why is that? We're getting there. It takes time. You know, these things, uh, even, even the employee number, I think we went from 35% women to kind of mid 40s over a five year period. So uh, the Zillow group board was all male for a long time. We were very fortunate to recruit April. I would love to add other women to the board. I'm sure we will in the future, but it takes time. Um, one of the things that the board list does, which is an organization I'm involved in, is it helps elevate women and raise awareness of women who would be great board candidates. And I think it's a great organization. We've worked with them. I've nominated a number of women onto board lists to help them get on other boards. But it's important for our company. It should be important for all companies. What kind of feedback do you get from your employees at Zillow? Do they speak up about these uh, gender issues? They do, uh, absolutely, um, as they should. Um, you know, it starts with an appropriate workplace environment where people can do their best work and they feel respected, um, and then making sure that their voices are heard. Also, um, you know, we try hard to not drown out voices of whatever gender they may be to try to make sure that people feel empowered to speak up and state their mind. Uh, this is something that I work really hard at and it ties to the issue of diversity. It seems like there are now so many qualified women in the workplace and why are we still seeing such a poor record on promoting women, getting them, especially on the boards, uh, whether it's a big company or even a small company? Why is it? So many reasons. Um, None of which are none of which are good in and of themselves, and and frequently they're cited as excuses. So I mean, people will, especially in tech, will talk about the pipelining problem, especially in software engineering, where it starts in middle school, grade school, high school, through college, and you know, making sure there are enough women entering the field of software engineering, and and that is an issue, of course. And we need more STEM education. We need more girls and women to stay interested in technology. Um, but there are plenty of qualified women in tech. They just their careers need to be mentored and grown. Another challenge clearly is companies that don't have a flexible workplace and uh, penalize either subconsciously or consciously people for parental leave. Uh, and I think tech has come a long way. I know Zilla Group has come a long way in terms of making sure that it's the type of workplace where families or people that are responsible for caregiving, whether it's a man or a woman, can still be really successful. You've written about and you talk a lot about something you call the credibility gap at uh, tech companies when it comes to hiring qualified women for tech jobs. What do you mean by credibility gap? Your companies make a lot of excuses for things. So they may say, um, you know, we can't have gender diversity because there aren't enough qualified women, or um, we can't have pay equity because it's too hard to calculate, or we can't mentor women because we don't want to be in an uncomfortable situation uh, with a man and a woman in the same room in a private place. Those are excuses. And the credibility gap is all about putting your money where your mouth is. So, for example, in the case of, of pay equity, this is a totally solvable problem. Companies, uh, you know, at, at really any scale, they level employees, uh, so they know what level each employee is, they have their performance rating as well, so it's a solvable problem to know if they're fairly compensated relative to one another. And we solved that problem, and it wasn't always that way. When we started Zillow 10 years or so ago, we had gender and equity on pay, now we have gender equity on pay companies mm -hmm. need to solve these problems. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice to companies, uh, uh, and especially to startups, where they have an opportunity to get it right because it's a fresh start? Well, unfortunately for startups, although they have the opportunity to get it right, these things, all this kind of HR stuff, is the thing that gets thrown overboard in the early stage of companies because they're running so quickly they don't bother creating programs or investing in these things. The advice I would give to them is to beware because the longer you wait to pay attention to this stuff, the harder it is to fix later. Um, you know, tech entrepreneurs, they talk about tech debt all the time, which mm -hmm. refers to uh, not 
re-architecting your code as you go, uh, mm -hmm. and if you don't pay down your tech debt, you hit a wall later. There's HR debt also. If you don't create these programs, if you don't think about gender equity, uh, pay, diversity, inclusion, et cetera, early on, it becomes very hard to fix later. What about with an established company? I know you interact with a lot of business leaders. What advice do you give them on how they can do better? Um, I think you have to make sure that you get broad business buy-in about the benefits of diversity. If it's coming from the diversity department and they're just saying, you know, we need to be more diverse, we need more equity and inclusion, then there's going to be eye rolling throughout the company. If you convince the business leaders, kind of executives and others throughout the company, that there is a benefit to the diversity in and of itself, not just for some social benefit, but to make the company perform better, that buy-in goes a long way. This whole topic of gender diversity is still a new way of thinking for many CEOs, surprisingly. But is there anybody out there that you think is uh, worth that's getting it right, that we can watch and learn from them, sort of a role model? I think Sachin Adela at Microsoft has done a great job here. When he started focusing on this, he stumbled right out of the gate. It's a complicated topic. Figuring out how to navigate it is hard. And I think he learned from some early missteps, and he's done a great job creating programs and investing in this.